every day people decide to build a website, a small one, a large one. And in many cases, they use a tool to pull that off more quickly, nice and easy, with little effort, come up with a nice website. And one of the main tools for that is WordPress. WordPress has been around for quite a while. It has a huge market share in website hosting. And I don't want to discuss whether it's the best tool or not, but it's a very, very popular tool. There are plenty of hosting providers for that. WordPress itself is for free. There are plenty of add-ons, plugins, templates for which you can pay, but in the core it's free. Uh, for the hosting, there are providers and they charge. Now there's one hosting provider that is often overlooked and I believe it's the cheapest and that is AWS. So in this video, I will explain how to configure AWS for WordPress hosting and do that all for like $3.50 a month. When you compare that with other hosting providers, they often have a very low price tag, but then charge for some other add-ons, but these add-ons are actually mandatory, like a SSL certificate for which they charge, but in AWS it's for free. And with all that, it's typically a lot more expensive than it looks in the beginning. And after all that, AWS is typically a lot cheaper. So if you know a hosting provider that is cheaper than AWS, let me know in the comments below. Apart from that, I still believe AWS is among the cheapest. So let's have a look at how the configuration looks like, because that is the tricky part. AWS, if you're not familiar with it, is one of the most reliable and powerful uh, cloud providers in the world. AWS has an extremely broad range of services and a very, very resilient backbone to support them. They're also very good in price value. However, the configuration is not so user friendly. So in terms of usability, they're really lacking behind all the other cloud providers. However, configure it once, save all the time. So I think it's worth looking into that. There are one or two tutorials on how to set up WordPress on AWS LightSail. And I will talk through that and give some background information on how that works. So that should bring you in a position to configure that system. AWS LightSail is like a starter kit, a, a shrunk version of the cloud service they provide. They have more than 200 services that really can do everything you can ever imagine. Uh, extremely complex, but very, very powerful. So LightSail is a small version of that that can only do the basics for a small company like website hosting and a couple other things. So it's probably exactly what you need. It's a good entry and very affordable. Let's look into the functionality in website hosting the background, what you need to know in order to configure AWS LightSail for WordPress hosting. In its core, LightSail provides you a virtual private server. So a dedicated server that is running in the cloud that has your name on it and that's where your WordPress instance is running. But of course, what's really all about is to get that connected to the internet, to all your users. And for that, you need a couple of other additional pieces. But in the core, it's really the virtual private server and that's what you pay for. Let's start from the left and see the different components that guide the traffic to your server. So first you need to register a domain. You can do that with many domain reg registries. Uh, AWS also has a service for that. It's called Route 53. So you can create your AWS account, go to the service Route 53 and register the domain that you want if it's free. You can also go to any other domain uh, register like GoDaddy or wherever and register the domain name you want. Hopefully it's still available. Now when you have that domain, 
you can configure which domain name servers uh, configure where to find the content for that domain. So with a domain register, you, you set up which DNS service, domain name service are used. And these you will point to the ones, to the four domain name service that are used for AWS LightSail. You will get the names in LightSail when you set up your DNS zone. Now the DNS zone is really what points the traffic in the actual direction where it needs to go. So that's where you set up the rules. So for example, www.mydomain.com goes to that place. So that's one of the things you will have to configure. A content delivery network is another component in the game. And that is uh, like a globally distributed cache. So let's say you have your server running in Ohio in the United States and your, your user is logging in from Hong Kong. So he will access the, the cache, the local cache somewhere in the Asia Pacific region and his requests don't have to go all the way to Ohio for each request. And that saves some um, latency time 10 milliseconds or something each time. And it also uh, saves network traffic. So that makes it cheaper and faster for you. So it's really a good thing in the runtime, but it uh, makes it a little bit more complicated in the setup. So important for now is to understand what is a content delivery network and why you need it. And then you have your server. The server will get a static IP instead of just a dynamic IP. That's more a, a configuration step in the process, but it's important. Otherwise, every time you reboot your server, it will get a new IP and no one will know where it is now. So you need a static address. Every time you, the server reboots, it will still be found under that address. So that's just minor, but an important thing. And that's also something other hosting providers often charge for. And then you need a WordPress instance. And when you spin up your virtual private server with Amazon LightSail, uh, you can set that up basically by just selecting WordPress instance. It will come out of the box. Now, another thing you will need is a certificate. The traffic these days is pretty much expected to be encrypted. And for that, you need a SSL certificate and that you also get as part of the configuration process for your domain specifically. And that needs to be done as part of the configuration as well. So these are all the components you need. You start with registering the domain, then you spin up your server, give it a static IP address, you set up a content delivery network that delivers against this static IP address. And then you point the domain to the uh, DNS service from Amazon. And there you configure the rules to access the content delivery network. Then you request the certificate, you validate the certificate, and then you configure your WordPress instance that it uh, delivers the content in a encrypted way. That way you have end to end accessibility via your domain in an encrypted way. And then everything is in place to configure the, your WordPress instance and design your website on it. This is route 53 on AWS services for just a random domain. You see here the name servers for DNS that are configured and you can go to add or edit name service and change these. You can have up to seven configured. You can remove them and add the ones that you get um, stated at light sale that need to be configured here, update, and then it might take uh, some time for these updates to take effect. 
uh, with all these DNS changes, um, it's often that it takes hours or, or up to a day to be propagated in the whole DNS world. Now, LightSail is another service that you find on uh, AWS just by searching for LightSail. And here you can start with creating another instance. I already have one running, but I can show you how to spin another one up. You create an instance, you change the location to wherever you want it to run. So maybe in Montreal. And then under Linux, you can have a WordPress instance that's the most basic, easy way to set that up. And you don't need anything else. You can get that for $3.50 a month. You give it a name here. And, oops. And I can spin that up and I can delete it later on. It's just a virtual uh, instance. So you see it's pending. It will take a minute or two to actually be installed. And once it's up and running, I can do some configuration. Now in the meantime, I can already configure some other things I will need. So under networking, I can create a Static IP, I do that only once the server is running. So my instance in Montreal is now running and I can now go in here and give it a static IP address. It has an IP address now, but I need to give it a static one. Needs a name. Static one. And now my domain, sorry, my server has a static IP address. So now my instance is running with WordPress and it has a static IP address. Let's see what that thing does now. So here I have the IP address. I type that in the browser, the IP address I just got, and I see a empty, fresh off the shelf WordPress instance under my IP address. Next step is to set up the content delivery network. So I go back to home and then networking and create a distribution. The origin is my new instance. I use the behavior preset, okay. Best for WordPress. The first year is free. Distribution one, test, all right. And here it is. Right now it's using HTTP to access my server. So this is a default domain name and I copy that and see if it works. And it doesn't work because the status is still in progress. So now about two minutes later, it still shows in progress, but now I can access the same page also on the DNS. So here I have it on the IP address directly and you see it's not secure without encryption. And here I have it on the DNS and it does not show not secure. So here it's served via HTTPS and now the status is enabled. Next step is to configure the DNS service. So for that, I need to go back to home networking and create a DNS zone. So I can't really do that. I don't have a spare domain, but I just type in a random uh, domain name just to show what comes next. 
and here I get the list of DNS servers and these are the DNS servers that I need to capture for my domain under route 53 or whatever you use to register your domain. So this needs to be configured there and it might take a day, a couple hours or up to a day to actually take effect. Once that is done, you can add an AU record. So you have different record types. Uh, you can, for example, type in add, that is for all the domains, so typically all, all the subdomains. Default would be like either mydomaintest.com my or www.mydomaintest.com. So add captures everything. And then you can resolve it to the distribution that you just created. So the test one in this case. And with a green check mark, I set that up. Now this only takes effect when these DNS servers here are captured in the registry. So all this might take hours or up to a day to take effect. And you can create another one um, for www and also point it, point it to the same location. After some waiting time, uh, your dummy page would be accessible under that domain name already. So what else do we need to configure? Going back to the instance, you need to retrieve your password to configure your WordPress instance. So you can connect using SSH. And right here, you see a file bitnami application password. And if you type that out, with cat, it prints out the password. So you can grab that from the screen and copy that somewhere in a, in a notepad, for example. And that's all we need here for the moment. And now I can go here and add WordPress login.php. And with my username user and the password I just copied from that file, I can log in, get to my dashboard, and I can set up, configure, design my website here. Now, the only thing missing now is the certificate to ensure encrypted delivery of the content. To set up the certificate, I go back to home, networking, and then the distribution I created. And here is a tab for custom domain. And I cannot act, enter the custom domain yet because I don't have a valid certificate in place yet. So that's something I need to do. So I need to create a certificate I need to capture my domain name here, which right now I don't have in place. And the certificate name is created automatically. Under alternate domain names, I would typically then uh, add the same with a www in front and I can add more if I need that. And when I create that, it would create that certificate. Now it only requests or, or creates that certificate, but I need to validate that. So let's have a look how that works. So now status is pending. And here it is. So now I get these two entries with a name and a value and these two records, C name records, I need to create in my DNS zone. So I need to copy paste this entry
and create a CNAME record with that value and you see it ends with that domain name so I have to remove that so in the end you need this string dot and then your domain name and here you get the value so you copy paste that and you capture that here and create that one and you do that twice one for each of these entries and then you need to wait a couple hours or so until that is validated and then your validation in progress will switch to validated and you will have a valid certificate and that you can use in your uh, distribution. There's one more important thing to configure in your WordPress instance and that is a bit dodgy and they should have uh, done a bit of a nicer way to, to do that. But here in your welcome to your first distribution you see this link and you need to follow that link for more instructions. And you come to this place. You can copy paste this one. And you need to change these two lines against these five and a bit lines in a configuration file and in this configuration file, WP config. So let's go back to the server and log in using SSH and we are right now in this directory and we need to go to Bitnami, WordPress, and here we have WordPress config. So I use vi and this is a configuration file. Now vi is a slightly old and ugly um, editor. So I can use the arrow tabs to go down. And here I see the lines I need to replace. So I need to replace the lines define site URL and define WP home. So these two lines and capture something new. And I add the new stuff by using I to get in the insert mode. And then I can paste the new stuff in and escape to leave the insert mode then i go to the first to the start of these lines and with dd dd i can delete these lines and then by colon right q i write i save these and changes and leave the vi and now the configuration has changed, but it doesn't take effect yet until I restart uh, the Apache server. So that we see here, we need to go to or oh, oh, run this command really. And now the Apache, the server is restarting. Now I go back to home, networking, go to my CDN and here down here I see your distribution pulls content from your origin using HTTP only. I can change that to HTTPS only and by doing that the content will, will be end-to-end -end encrypted. Now all that will only take effect once the certificate is in place which is currently being validated if I had the domain registered. So from now on, it's just waiting if everything is done. But these are really the steps you need to do to configure your system. 
And with that, all that done, bit of waiting, or actually you can already start setting up your uh, WordPress website. So if this tutorial was good for you, helped you to set that up and get a cheap way to host your WordPress website, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos about developing of mobile applications, cloud applications, please follow my channel.